What's going on guys? Welcome to another episode of Demsec. And in this video, we're going to show you how to secure your phone. Well, we're in regards to Android because we don't like uh, we don't like Apple. Yeah, and I'm fairly right. sure a lot of the apps we're going to show, uh, probably not the password managers, but some of the more security-based apps uh, probably won't even work on iOS, like I don't think they even have the correct APIs to do this kind of stuff. So this is going to be a totally Android focused video. Yay! <laughs> so uh, yeah, let's get started. So this first app isn't necessarily Android only, but it's something you should be doing on all your accounts where possible. And that's Google Authenticator. So I've just pulled that up now and obviously I'm going to blur out all these accounts and all of these uh, two-factor codes. But the whole idea of this Google Authenticator is there's loads and loads of websites which support two-factor. And the whole idea is you can log in with your with your normal password, which potentially could be very weak. And using Google Authenticator, each one of these codes will update every, I don't know how often these update, but every 30 seconds or so, probably more a minute. Yeah, probably more a minute. And you enter this code and this proves that you are who you say you are. So, where this is especially beneficial, and you'll probably see all over Twitter and all, all the time, loads of places get breached and their databases get dumped. And if you have, and if you have a weak password, even if those passwords are stored securely, they could be cracked. This prevents anyone from being able to do anything with your cracked passwords. And uh, yeah, that's Google Authentica, available on the App Store, the Google Play Store. Another thing about the Google Authenticator as well is really simple to set up. So uh, a lot of different uh, like websites like Facebook and uh, I know Twitter. I think you can do it on loads of different things like Amazon. Team Viewer, Amazon. You can all uh, link it up to your Google Authenticator, and it's as easy as literally just taking a picture of the QR code, yeah. and then that's set up. Um, so yeah, that, that's it's pretty cool how it's just so easy. Yeah, exactly. Uh, so, another kind of passwordy, authentication-y, just adding ease on the end of things, uh, kind of application is LastPass. So, I, I did a little blog on this uh, a couple of, uh, two, about a month ago, um, just saying how good LastPass is, um, even though I've literally just read an article on the fact that there's three vulnerabilities in it, but meh. Um, I'm sure they'll fix that. Um, so, yeah, if we just go into LastPass... Uh, and another thing as well with this, which is pretty cool, you can use your fingerprint to uh, authenticate uh, to get onto the app. Um, and then there's loads of... Oh, God. Um, you can... Well, so I, <laughs> the reason why I've used mine is because I, I like to organise things. So, yeah, all of, all of my stuff is all organised into proper folders and then we can just search whatever we need but yeah this essentially you can so you can sync it up with uh your phone with your desktop so that's pretty cool if you've got if you use a lot of uh well if you've got loads of applications or websites that you use on different on your computer and on your phone it's good because then you can obviously you don't have to keep on going to your computer for the passwords that are stored on LastPass. uh there's loads of other things that you could do you can have uh secure notes as well so i i have um on here, I have like my gym code for when I go to the gym. <laughs> when I go to the gym, what's a gym? Um, and yeah, it's just really useful to have on your phone. Yep. And just to mention with that, if you want to have passwords sync between your desktop and your phone, there is a fee there, and it's quite cheap. It's only I think twelve pounds a year or something. It's really not a lot of money, um, but it's definitely worth it. And I'm pretty sure all like cloud-based password managers do have some kind of charge but i'm pretty sure lastpass is one of the cheapest next app and i have it open on my screen now is called arpguard and we have actually mentioned this in a previous video and it's quite cool so as you can see right now i'm not connected to wi-fi so let's just go ahead and connect to wi-fi we'll just wait for that to jump on so we're now connected and it's going to show the ssid of our network don't even care about blurring that out to be honest um and the whole idea of ArpGuard is, now I'm connected, ArpGuard takes a note of the gateway's MAC address. And if that was to change, and the only reason why that would change in my mind is that you're being ARP spoofed. Um, 
if it does change, what it does is totally disables my Wi-Fi. So this is really good if you if you have to use a lot of public Wi-Fi because what it'll go ahead and do is when you connect to that Wi-Fi, even if someone then maliciously tries to ARP spoof you, without you even having to think about it, if your phone's just in your pocket and you've totally forgot, forgotten about that open network you're connected to, it just will completely disable your Wi-Fi and it'll give you an alert that it's done so. And it's, it's a really simple app, and this is one that is available on the Play Store, and I'm fairly sure this, like, just would not be available on iOS. So yeah, we we kind of need that in this house, obviously, being the four hackers quotation marks um, in the household. We uh, yeah, well, I, I know me and Dale both have it because yeah, evil people. <laughs> so it, it, I've just actually checked now, and uh, apparently there's been a recent update for it, and uh, there's a log of attacks, so you can see any attack that's ever happened, which is cool. That you can look through and. Uh, See, see that one's weird to me right there, that Azure Wave Technologies, I don't even know what device may have done that. But you've got Cadmus Computer Systems, which is obviously VirtualBox, and these are all ones that we've ran inside of our house. Um, we so would show you as well, but unfortunately we have switches. If we do man in the middles uh, or up spoofing, yeah. uh, it will break our switches. So. Yeah. <laughs> so one benefit of this is I've just gone into the settings as well, and... If you are rooted, which we'll probably go talk about later on in the video, how if you're rooted, you are you are technically more vulnerable. But if you are rooted, you have the invulnerability setting here, which is really cool because if you enable that, not it, it won't disconnect you from the Wi-Fi. It'll just make your phone invulnerable to ARP spoofing attacks because it just won't listen to what's being announced on the network. So once you connect, it'll just save that and will not allow it to ch allow it to change. That's pretty cool. I didn't know it did that. Yep. So, if we look into the security settings, obviously, as we're doing a video about how to secure your phone, then there's quite a few uh, settings in here that you can have that will secure your phone, funny enough. The first one I'm going to talk about is the encryption. So, I think uh, Dad, me and Dad were talking about this earlier, and it was uh, Android 5, do you said? I think so. I can't, I can't yeah. remember exactly. We could probably search it, but I'm pretty sure it was Android 5 where, yeah, the mids. Yeah, it, it wasn't set by default, so it would your phone would essentially be unencrypted. And then after uh, 5, so I think it, I think it was Lollipop. Um, uh, yeah, Lollipop, Marshmallow, Nugget. Yeah, yeah, it would have been Lollipop. Um, that it, They introduced it so that it was encrypted by default as soon as you... Um, got the phone basically um so that's obviously a good thing yeah and that, uh, that leads straight on to the next thing is make sure you're running the most up-to-date version of android possible and this this is kind of a point of contention because i know a lot of people out there don't upgrade their phone very often and as a result are stuck on a older version of android the way i see it is the only way if you the only way you could have the most up-to-date security patches is either flash a version, uh, custom firmware where it's got the newest security patches or buy a new phone. Um, if you do have a new phone, make sure you're always installing those upda updates as often as you can. And you can actually go ahead, uh, I'll show here, if you go to about phone, you can check your uh, Android security patch level. I don't know if that's on all phones, but on OnePlus phones, you can actually see which... Uh, security patch for level you're on and uh, that's particularly interesting on um, non-Nexus devices because what tends to happen is you could have, like I have Android 7.0 and obviously there's later versions but I have an up-to-date security patch so just make sure you keep an eye on that and you do check fairly regularly for uh, firmware updates. So the obvious thing as well is the screen lock. So I have a the pattern as the, as an option or not as an option as my uh, password to authenticate um but there are other options that you can use so you can use swipe pattern pin or password so i think uh pattern pin and password are obviously the most secure ones uh pattern one i find is more of ease of use but then i'd hardly ever use the pattern 
setting option. Anyway, I always use my fingerprint because uh, it's just faster. Yeah, However, and it... that, that's a definite thing to keep in mind is the, the fingerprint reader, how much of a novelty it is on a phone, it is actually a really secure idea. Like your, incri- your fingerprint is encrypted on your phone. And obviously, if it's your fingerprint, it doesn't matter if someone knows who you are or even knows what your fingerprint looks like. They can't actually enter that into the phone. And that's another thing with the pattern unlock is I actually prefer that because I don't have any research supporting this, but the way I see it is obviously with Android phones, you could plug in a USB keyboard. And if you have a pin unlock or a uh, password unlock, it is brute forceable in that way. But the way I see it is a pattern unlock would be a lot harder to brute force. Um, so on, on this page, I'm just going to do one more thing because there's quite a few, um, but unknown sources. Um, I always have this one unchecked unless there is actually an app that I know is uh, fine. Well, quotation marks again, fine. Um, but yeah, you should always keep this one unchecked. So you could jump into some adware where it will try and download a file automatically or something like that, um, and then you're, you're screwed. But uh, yeah, you should just always keep that one off should never allow unknown sources unless obviously you know what the uh, application you're downloading is. Another good app to have, I guess, on on your phone is... So I have multiple variants of this tool, but I, I like NetX. So NetX is a network discovery tool. So this can kind of be good if you... This is not really a phone security thing, but it kind of is, I guess. It's just a cool app to have. Um, but... But essentially, this is just like a an end map for <laughs> with a pretty UI for your phone. Um, so as you can see here, you can see all of the different devices that are on on our network. Um, and I, I particularly like this because I I can see when someone's left their computer on for a very long time and was wasting the electric. Hashtag students. I made myself feel sick saying that. Wow, you actually said hashtag? I actually said hashtag. Can we can we cut that bit out of the video? No, that's going in. So one thing that we should have covered probably earlier is you should always use a VPN. Always. Oh, yeah. <laughs> always use. So this, this just goes for anything. If you're using Wi-Fi that isn't yours, even if it is yours, you're probably better off using a VPN. But... Especially if you use a lot of public Wi-Fi, you need to use a, B- a VPN. And what the one that both me and Aaron use is private private internet access. So I've gone ahead and opened up the app here. And you do have the choice of either using the private internet access app or just using OpenVPN and importing the profiles. And I really like private internet access because, one, it's dirt cheap for what you actually get. For a year, I think it's like £25 for a whole year. And they have so many different locations. So I'm just scrolling through the locations now. And you can just appear to be from wherever the hell you want. And it's super, super easy to use. You just have a slider and you can authenticate and you're now connected to the VPN. So uh, hope you enjoyed this video, guys. If you have your own recommendations, remember to leave them in the comments. Uh, Links for everything are down in the description. Make sure you do pick up a lot of those things, especially ArpGuard and the VPN. Those are the two I would definitely jump on board with. And uh, yeah, that's about it. So I guess we'll see you next week. Bye.